All right, so the title for Season of the Haunted Reaper is available to earn. You can probably have around up until the end of the expansion for Witch Queen, which we don't know the exact date for Lightfall to come out, but usually six months from now or uh, next year is the date. So you don't you have a lot of time to finish this title, uh, but there is a time gate for the title, which is three weeks to finish. Uh, so there's one trial if you need three weeks to get this done. Uh, so you, usually Bungie sometimes re reduce that. Uh, time gate but only near the end of the expansion if, when people run out of the time they'll have three weeks to finish the title so you gotta wait for that to happen or just finish it in this season but you can always finish it next season nothing to worry about there so usually these videos are very long uh, i try to go into very detail of each triumph uh this title is not that confusing compared to others um, but a lot of overlap and a lot of different triumphs to look at i'll try my best to show a lot of stuff so the videos will be a lot longer than normal um, but I do try my best to put a text description of each triumph in the description in the comments so you guys can read that if you don't understand what I'm saying or maybe I missed something, I'll put it down there sometimes. Also, the whole video will be timestamped so you can skip through the video and look through the video instead of watching everything. But I do recommend some stuff where there is some min-maxing or efficiency between some triumphs here and there, which is pretty important to know. If you don't know, you, now you do know. So I'm going to go my best and show you guys everything here. So usually... At the beginning of this video, I like to go through a short description. If you don't want to watch the whole video, I'll just go over everything here quickly. And then it will go into complete detail for each triumph and all that good stuff. So let's start off with the first triumph here, which is Severance. This is the story quest, which is you need to do this no matter what for unlocking a lot of stuff for this other triumph. So this is very important. But like I said, recommend to do multiple things, which I'll explain in the future. Then we have vendor upgrades. This is uh, 18 in total. Uh, this will, you, there is seven from the story quests, eight from the seasonal challenges and three from the rep. This is the time gate at the end of Tier of the Nightmare, the new activity. Uh, there's three bosses, they rotate weekly. So it's 60 weeks. This at the end of tier three, you spend 500 dread. You get 50 times, which is a lot. A thousand kills with haunted weapons. Uh, this is easy and passive to get, so don't worry about it too much. Reaper's Blade is getting the Scythe and the Dialect. Uh, very passive, very easy. It could be in Sever or Dialect. Then we have Opulent Keys. Uh, this is passive as well. I'll explain that in the future. But you, get the, you can get keys for opening chests from doing high value targets and stuff or the Tier 3 containment. And then you need to go open it up in uh, Pleasure Gardens and uh, Royal Pools. This one we have, this one's a bit hard to explain even in here, but I better to just watch <laughs> the full video, but uh, you have to complete these four triumphs and each triumph has their own triumphs in it. So uh, good luck with that. Then when you find all the callous automatons, I'll just link it in the description for a video for that one. Then we have a collectible, which is finding the bobbleheads. Um, so I will show my best, show, try my best to show everything here, but I'll probably either Either I will show in the video or I will just post a link in the description and comments. You just watch that video. It's very easy to find them, but it requires you to do everything, uh, whatever. Anyway, so hopefully, uh, briefly, not, nothing too crazy. I can't really go into detail as it'll be very long, but we'll now start with the long, very long and tedious descriptions for the long triumphs here. Severance is probably the most important triumph out of all of them. The hardest one is Harvester Sorrows. It's not hard, it's just time consuming. But the rest, this is important. This is the story quest, but you need it to unlock the other triumphs. Like you can't, if you don't never started Severance, you can't do this. You can't do this. Uh, you can't do this. So it locks three triumphs. So as long as you are finishing or doing Bound and Sorrow, uh, you can do everything else. But if you want to be efficient with Bound and Sorrow, you can do multiple things while doing Bound and Sorrow. But uh, I think it's a bit better to do it with this one as 50 is a lot. So with Bound and Sorrow, all you have to do is to start the season off. There's going to be a seasonal quest or season intro quest, which is usually located on the moon. So you want to go ahead to the moon here. And there should be like some sort of banner. Click on and you start it and then after that it wants you to get 500 dread dread is the currency of this season um and you get a lot of it uh pretty often 
um and just by doing anything basically will get you dread uh and you need 500 total and you can only hold 2500 but eventually if you do get upgrades there is ways to increase it uh for the most part so that would be the middle track here i would, what i do recommend early on to get will be getting uh this one over here the first one has these aragoras which is the uh i guess the material you can find um on the derelict it gives you 10 per and you want to get this one as well which daily bounties just give you dread which would be 40 per daily bounty which is very useful as you want to do daily bounties for another reason um which is the rep system which you'll need to get for the next triumph so i recommend doing that one thing to note is that the way this upgrades work is that you have to put two in a column and when you put two the next column is unlocked but you don't have to get the one before it so for example i could skip uh, if i put two here and then the next row unlocks i could put the next one here even though i don't have this one unlocked right so in my opinion the best to go for are the ones that will increase your rate of dread if you're going to be farming the 50 but eventually you'll get a lot early on as we had to wait weekly for upgrades now we can get pretty much all the upgrades pretty quickly except for the ones in the rank rewards here which you can't see except for the prestige but yeah so i'm gonna show you guys all that good stuff then after getting and finishing the tier 3 containment you'll get uh to go and do a sever quest a sever quest is located over here on the moon and each time you finish one bound in sorrow it will unlock one of the six or in an order here so uh you'll do one of these quests here and they're pretty fun and there's things to do and i'll mention it real quick here so to min max uh this if you want to do this efficiently is you want to put on haunt a weapon i don't i mean you don't need to um you can get safe kills i don't recommend it i'll explain in a second here um but if you want to work together with these two uh severance and the vendor upgrades because uh some of the vendor upgrades are from the seasonal challenge so for example if you go to uh week four you can say it shows you here if you do the shame sever quest using a solo subclass solo weapon kinetic weapon or season weapon then you get a you get an upgrade for the vendor. One thing to note is that you cannot use a scythe or use any weapon with like dragonfly or explosive payload, anything that has explosions. You cannot use it because it'll count as solar damage. Of course, it's, it, this is fine for this mission, but when you go to week five here, you cannot use it. It will it will make it where you don't complete it. So make sure that double check if you're doing the sever quest, the sever bound and sorrow check the two zone challenges if you have them all unlocked already because they won't unlock weekly you can do this while doing the as it on the first try or it's i mean it's not a big deal to do it again but to be efficient you should do those missions while doing the bound and sorrow as you'll get upgrades for your vendor which you're going to need for your title as well so that's pretty much it for the severance one just do all the stories you can do it all in one day if you want no big deal um but i do recommend doing that as well also almost forgot as well is doing this as well uh as each uh sever quest which is six of them will have a bobblehead that's hidden in each in each quest and i'll show i'll either like i said i'll show you guys in the video each location later on and probably or just link a video that shows all of them already which is probably better in my opinion so there is that so there was three things you could do while doing this, this, and this, and you could do the other stuff too. But I, uh, I'll explain in the future a little bit why you shouldn't do those while doing this. So next one we have vendor upgrades. Like I've said, you'll get there's 18 in total, and there is seven from here. So we do all seven balance sorrows. You get one per completion there. Then you also get three from uh, the rep system here. You get three over here up until uh, legend is the last one and then you get eight more which is what let me just go over the uh vendor here's the vendor you get rep from doing bounties you get rep from doing pretty much uh, uh opening up several chests or picking up 
the, uh, the, the, the petrified Aragor. But also, you get a lot of it from Nightmare Containment. Uh, now, this is where it's kind of passive. And by the time you finish, um, by the time you finish, or getting close to finishing the 50 tiers, which is a lot, you'll finish getting your rep up. So there's no rush to get this done. Eventually, passively, if you just do this triumph, you will finish the rep and get to legend no matter what uh, trust me on this like i'm already mythic too and i already uh, that's like almost reset prestige too so like uh, i had to do all 50 already so that this all counted towards that but one thing to note very important for rep is that there with the season pass you can get rep bonuses right here so at rank 12 you get rep up and at rank uh rank 32 so you get 30 percent increase in rep so if you want to farm nightmare containment uh i would get to rank 32 first uh to get the most bonus from the rep gains basically so that's very important if you want to get your uh rank rewards there and get your uh upgrades for your vendor there pretty much that's pretty much it for the upgrades. Oh, wait, a light. Then, uh, then the last part of it is seasonal challenges. Like I've said, uh, you can do severance together with the if you're doing the sever quest every week. But there are other ones as well. Uh, so, for example, uh, there will be... Let me remember which one is this one here. Sustained fire will give you a upgrade. So you want to just put on a auto rifle or tracer rifle. Uh, I would recommend a haunted weapon because... Uh, there is a haunted auto rifle and a haunted trace rifle in this season over here. So it'd be Hall Denial and Auto Rifle. And those will give you your progress for that seasonal challenge. And that give you a, a vendor upgrade and install damage and a sever activity. Since the shame activity wants you to do it on a solo subclass, so that should be finished pretty easily for week four. For week two, uh, we did, I think it's Harvest at Dawn is what we got for the upgrades this one it wants you to uh use a scythe on the dialect so when you're doing when you're doing tier uh, uh nightmare containment just pick up a scythe and get some kills it's quite a bit and then a solo power weapon so you want to use either like a submachine not submachine gun, a heavy machine gun or you want to use anything else that's a solo heavy weapon in several activities so you could do that in the shame one as well just get solar power weapons. I use a machine gun um, that's solar, which is like Avalanche or the new one, Fix Odds from the dungeon, which you might not have, probably not. Then for week three, uh, I think it was probably, it's been a while. It's either, it's probably either this one or this one. Loadout two, probably shotgun and vision rifle kills and powerful nightmares. So powerful nightmares is there, it spawns a lot in nightmare containment and you can use a shotgun um from haunted or any other shotgun you want or any fusion rifle you want it doesn't matter but you get this done passively as long as you pay attention and you're doing it while doing nightmare containment it should be pretty good to go for that one and then like i've said week four is sever shame then week five is sever grief use a void subclass week six has two upgrades you want to use this one which is rage's arc arc weapons and this one when he's a glaive or a sword in when you're doing nightmare containment and powerful cabal powerful cabal and sever only spawns during the kaido missions which will be uh resolve and rage they will spawn there so those are the ones you're going to go for for the kaido ones those have powerful cabal and sever just so you know but i recommend probably the glaive works because you don't need ammo for the glaive and or you can just put both on to be honest but you during containment so make sure you're doing that i the glaive is important because it's a haunted weapon uh you can use so there's that and week seven all you do is the same uh the last mission which is or not the last mission this is the crow mission um which is week two you know use a voice of class blah 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 like, like i said make sure you don't use a scythe during these missions as it won't count for the most part so that's pretty much it for the upgrades uh making sure you do all those 
Next up, we have uh, Tritainment. I think I pronounced it, which is this is a time gated quest or triumph. Uh, each boss rotates weekly. So if it's Mechanist, then next week would be Sworn to Azot or Anifex, I guess. I don't know. Uh, yeah. And then the third week would be Navoda. If it's Navoda, then it would be Mechan the, Machina the Machinist next time. So you can't really fast track this one. It's one you're forced to play once a week or come back a week every week um but like i said in the short description that it might get uh cut down to probably daily but that only happens at the end of the expansion which will be a while from now next up we have harvester of sorrows this one is using 500 dread at the end of a tier 3 containment which is pretty difficult to do and very long and hard not hard but long and tedious um it's going to require you to play a lot but you can do multiple things like i said earlier in the video multiple things you can farm like doing haunted weapons during this and getting the reaper or the scythe kills during this as well um and you can do the other seasonal challenges while doing tier three, remember, tier three nightmare containment uh the fastest boss in my opinion will be either the machinist or the navoda as their pretty easy to kill compared to uh the oz ozot but uh up to you of uh what you want to farm it on what week um but you gotta remember you have to use 500 dread in order to get the progress for this so my best advice for you is when you're doing nightmare containment you if you're low on dread you have to use do the patrols that are in that area so for example there will be the kill ones and the uh pick up ones the pick up resources one um uh the ones for the killing there's like there's like two one for killing scorn and one for killing anything and then there's one for doing uh, ability kills which is you can just get it just need to get five ability kills but just a, a regular melee kill not powered will count towards that progress so just getting a melee kill there is fine and there's one getting headshots is five headshots which is pretty easy to do so just keep getting, keep picking them up to give you at least 40 dread or 30 dread per patrol. So it adds up while getting kills, getting nightmares and all that stuff. If you're getting other upgrades, for example, in the uh, vendor here, like I said, the middle track is pretty important for getting uh, other stuff. So uh, if you want to get more dread, then you can get this one here, getting kills on the Leviathan. And then uh, you can get this one as well, which will increase the amount of dread when you do patrols. So that is pretty important to get when you're doing the 50 farm. It's a lot of work, but I right, good luck with that. Now, I didn't want to mention this, but a nightmare containment for the completions here, you don't have to like fully complete it. Like you can, the time it runs out, it just goes to the next one. And similar to the boss, if you don't kill the boss, people said you can claim it still. But I don't, I think it's BM to AFK and not help. If there's actually people killing the boss and you're just AFK, I don't recommend doing that. I at least help people try to do it. But if you're there by yourself and you don't want to do it, then I hear that you can just do nothing. and It'll count towards it, but I'm not entirely sure. But if you if you have a lot of dread chirp, if you're farming for dread by like doing patrols and stuff, then I you have to do, do everything at the same time. So a lot of multitasking there. But yeah, 50 kill, 50 dread, uh, 50 containments is a lot of work, and uh, it took me a long time to do it. But I did it weekly. If you, it might seem a lot of work if you've done none of it, and it'll be a lot of work now. But since it did took me six, seven weeks to get this done, as it's time gated for seven weeks. Uh, I was playing on all three characters, so if you played on three characters, you do it seven times, uh, one per week. You know, seven times three is 21. That's almost halfway there, but do it a couple times, multiple times per character, then it adds up slowly to 50. So up to you how you want to do it. But uh, yeah, that's how I did it. So uh, yeah, good luck again uh, for that one. Now, let's go with malicious haunt this one like i said it's passive a thousand kills with the season of the haunt weapons the best weapon to do this on in my opinion is the glaive but of course do the ones where the seasonal challenges when you get kills all the weapons use those weapons first and then 
if you want to round out that thousand kills uh the glaive is the easiest one as you don't need ammo to kill things with you just gotta slap them with it and then it works pretty easily with that one then after that we have reaper's blade this one is 60 kills with the scythe on the dialect the dialect uh this one's easy to do if you don't know how to spawn the glaive or the glaive the scythe uh there will be core breaker or core bearers whatever or nightmares that will be part of the objective they will drop a core on the floor pick it up and then you can uh put it back at the uh thing in the uh, on the activity i forget what it's called and you can pick up the scythe and get killed with it you can also get kills in the sever quest but like i said make sure you don't do it during a challenge she's no challenge or uh if you do explore uh royal pools and uh pleasure gardens a core bearer will spawn and then they can spawn a scythe in there as well but not as much enemies best place is containment the farm for this one for reaper's blade next up we have opulent avarice this one is getting opulent keys and you can open it up uh use those keys to open it up lock chests in royal pools and the dial and uh da, 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 pleasure gardens um, this one is kind of passive. You can farm for it if you want. You get these keys from doing uh, just random patrol chests around the map, uh, high value targets, haunted alcove chests, and tier, tier 3 containment chests, and in the chest after tier, uh, containment, which when a countdown uh, starts to play, right, it says uh, the next containment will spawn in like a minute and 30, two chests. Will be active in the derelict area or the uh, coliseum area and you can find the two chests using couple combo detector which is on your uh your ghost here do recommend using this and then uh you can use like a scope and scope in there'll be five spots you can look on uh, i can show you guys where they are in the game here if you open those chests you have a chance to get a opulent key um and that key will tell you if you hover over it in your inventory which chest you need to go to it'll tell you either uh either pleasure gardens or royal pools and there's three chests per area you don't really need to know the exact area just go to all three and then try your luck it'll tell you if it's correct or not but the three uh chests we have here uh, one will spawn my over here if you zoom in and then you have your other chests uh, over here what should be it? this one over here you can spawn there and then you will have the three other chests you'll have just over here up there and then you can head over here the last two chests one will spawn near here so this one's the first one you should check pretty easily because near where you get the end over here and then the last chest is also pretty nearby um yeah so you want to pick these up every time you finish containment if you're farming it and a chance for a key but also when you clan the dread over here the chest that spawns over there i mean um has a decent chance to drop a key so i would like i said that's why you don't have to farm like go into the other areas first like row pools or uh pleasure gardens because if you're just farming the 50 then a good chance that the key will drop from there and you can only hold one key at a at a time so uh, make sure you use a key as soon as you get it and so you, you can't just hold it forever right so make sure you use a key um, once you get one. All right. So uh, just f this is pretty passive. Just go ahead and farm. Just farm that uh, the, 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 that activity and you should be pretty good to go. So the chests are right here. One here. And then one there. Lastly, uh, there is one over here. Right here, this is a uh, high value target. Kill that, chance to get a key from that one if you want. And then 
if you want to head to uh, Pleasure Gardens, you take this path over here. And you can go ahead and get the other chests over there. From Pleasure Gardens here, you can head to the first chest, just behind this pillar over here. Another chest is just across the way here. Go there. Then the last one next to the fallen greatness callus just over there. So those are the chests uh, that you'll need to pick up and go 15 times once you get the key. Just make sure to check which location it is and then just go to the three chests and find them there. Next up, we have... Uh, what is it? Shadows Return. Oh boy, oh boy. Here we go. So here... Ah, it's a bit. It's gonna be a bit hard to explain, but I'll try to show most. I most I know. Uh, this is one triumph, and then all those four is another four triumphs. So we head over to your triumphs here, and we go to see the haunted, the derelict, and then here are the four right here, and each one, these two over here, all are triumphs, and the bottom two over here are high value targets. So let's go over the first one here. So these ones are random public events dur during or while in uh, Pleasure Gardens and uh, Royal Pools here. Now, there's a bit I can just post. I can put a link, a, a video showing what they look like uh, in the comments here. I don't have the footage of these. I did them like I did them off stream, but these ones, um, the, the uh, some of them will do the public event thing, which is like it goes blue, dark blue, and then it'll give you a special text on the bottom left. But sometimes the text will not always show because multiple destiny kind of sucks. And uh, the text on the bottom left, the flavor text will be like jumbled and it'd be too much at the same time. So not all of it gets shared, sadly. But uh, I can go over uh, what they are and what you're looking for. So when it comes to at the behest, of the Empress. This one's a bit awkward. Um, let me see. Uh, this one is when people people say it only spawns in rural pools, but I think it can also spawn in here. Uh, but I could be wrong. I I did it in rural pools, and what happens is that there's a blue a message will pop up that says Kaido has like the reinforcements ready or something like that. And you can get to interact with a console similar to like uh, battlegrounds when you spawn the boss in or the strike. So you want to, you know, you know, interact with that, and it will spawn uh, a giant scion to help you fight. And you have to do clear a bunch of enemies, uh, and eventually you reach the end of the wave. And a bosses, two bosses will spawn. And you kill both of them pretty much. And I'll finish that triumph. Then we have the next one. Which is, uh, let's do, what are we, this is not what I'm looking at. This would be difficult to go back and forth. Uh, let's do Exile Ended. So Exile Ended is, this one will have a prisoner. This one I see spawn a lot in this area. So usually you'll see a force field, an orange force field, and then a guard. This one's very easy. Kill the guard, and then sometimes it'd be a friendly or enemy in there. Kill the enemy if it's an enemy. And then you should be pretty good to go for that one. It's completely random. People say... The best for things for these to spawn more often is to keep clearing the room, but I don't know. You could let other people do it too if you want to. Um, other than that, the next one we have here is uh, what do we have? Battle lines. Uh, this one is some. So this one can spawn in both areas, from what I can tell. And I'll tell you that uh, a shield has spawned, or something like some, someone's defending some generator. All you need to do is that these three uh, generators will spawn, like uh, like the public event, basically, of um, uh, like the, the one of uh, the giant drill, and it spawns a giant orange bubble around some cabal. All you need to do is kill the cabal in that bubble, and then once you kill them, a like, gladiator or or a a, a bigger will, a bigger cabal will spawn. You kill that cabal, and then uh, then the force field disappears, and then a new one spawns in another corner of the map. So go to that, then kill everything again, and then go to the last one, 
kill everything in there, and then the final boss will spawn in that bubble as well. And then once you kill that boss, it will give you the triumph uh, for that one. And the last one, this one will... Wait, last one? That's... <laughs> I'm going ahead of myself here. Um... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, shared fears. This one will, sp will, uh, will say like three fears will spawn or something like that. Um, and it'll be three, uh, three, 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 three big scorn chieftains will spawn in, th it, 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 this can happen in both areas, royal pools and pleasure gardens, and it'll spawn, um, in three corners of the map on each area and then you could kill all three of them and eventually you go back to the middle and then the secret of the deep uh psychic will spawn as well and kill him and good to go it will do uh the blue public event thing when they spawn in so it's pretty obvious when they spawn in pretty much that's a that's a triumph that's one triumph then the next triumph here was to go ahead and um do haunted alcoves and this as you saw maybe in the early video here uh it will do the flavor text pretty much and it will say something along the lines of dogs are snoring or a sniper is aimed at your head or some sort of abomination blah blah, blah or a sword and shield so the first alcove in this area here is going to be this one which has spawn so you're going to kill the dogs Right, and keep clearing them. Eventually, the boss will spawn as long as you keep clearing the room. Then, uh, it's completely random when they spawn. Um, but you keep looking out, keep going to the area. Best to check your radar and head to the nearest area. So that one over there is a dog one. Then the sword and shield one, if you head up here, you'll see your radar will have red blimps. Eventually, they will spawn in here. You want to kill, uh, keep hitting the sword, and eventually the shield will spawn behind them. And you can like finish with the shield one that has half health. Then when you head back over to the uh, pleasure, not pleasure, the uh, royal pools for the last two here. Um, they're pretty hard to kill, so make sure you get a weapon and look for them when they're available. So I'm going to go ahead and head over to uh, royal pools here. So for, ro for royal pools, the text will say a sniper is aimed at your head or something like that. I could be wrong, or aimed at your ghost, I guess. Because that's like the one that spoilers aimed at Savalo's ghosts and I don't know, season of, I don't know, I forgot. It'll be in here as a sniper. And then the last one, I think it's like a ritual is ready to be prepared or something like that. I don't know, it's, not a, it's, a, it's a ritual. So we want to go ahead and head over here for the last one. Which is in the wall over here. You should see some red blimps if there's enemies in here. And when you get inside of here, you want to go ahead and interact with these on the floor. And you'll be once you do all three of them, uh, then you can spawn in the boss, which is a abomination, basically. And that finishes the triumph for the haunted alcoves. The last two is high value targets. Now high value targets are pretty random. It kind of sucks. I'll be honest. Um, so there will be two in each. As you see, a high value target, high value target is nearby. But the issue is that there's one that will spawn or just be an orange bar and not be a named one. So for example, uh, the high value target that spawned in for this one, I think would be the orange bar, sadly, which is this one right here. This is the high value target, which is not a named one. Um, but they do spawn in certain areas. For example, I think one spawns in the corner over here, and then one spawns um, over here in this area over here. Um, I don't have videos for them, but I can I guess show you guys. I guess I'll find a link. I'll find someone has a video of them. Um, but they are very not tedious, but very annoying to go for, as they take like 10 minutes, 15 minutes to respawn or rotate into a new one. And it's completely random. I think they mainly spawn whenever uh, a haunted alcove spawns or a public event spawns in an area. So just keep a lookout. Like I've said, a lot of it spawns at the same time. So the text on the left won't say a high value, high value target spawns. So you have to just walk around, hope that you find a yellow bar that spawns. So the ones that spawn in Petra Gardens can spawn in the corner over here. It will be a giant uh, machine gun one. Uh, and that will be there. 
and then the other one spawns over here it's a scion it's very hard spot but you'll see a yellow bar sci uh, scion that will be running around over here and you'll kill it so they spawn opposite areas but keep a lookout whenever a hive attacker spawns and look for that area but like i said they mainly like to spawn whenever a public event spawns or when a haunted alcove is active so just keep a lookout when you're looking forward for that there it's kind of annoying but once you all those four triumphs then you can go ahead and collect shadows return um kind of annoying this one but you'll spend a lot of time here um doing this at least, you, at least you can you can do this while getting keys as well for your opulent opulent chests that's one one thing good thing you can do while farming these areas here all right you can do the keys and farm for these as well next up here don't heat this is finding the callous automatons i'll have the locations in a video i had them recorded already but i'll just link some random video that works better than mine to clear. lastly we have number one fan this one is going to be finding bobbleheads nine of them and you have to place them down in the helm the helm will tell you exactly which ones you're missing so if you're watching this video and like oh I missed one. I don't know which one I missed. You go. You can go to the helm right now and see which one you're missing, as it will tell you which one. It will, you know, all that stuff. Uh, should I show you locations or just put a video in the comment description? I don't know. Uh, I might just do that to be honest. Um, which will be. I think the videos are very too long. As much as I want to show the locations, I do have the videos, but not all of them. So I, I'll link you guys a video all locations for all the bubble heads the one thing i can tell you is that there is one bubble head in one of the rooms in, in the castle here um just to make sure you know about this but uh like i've said at the end of the tier three containment uh you can access two doors that open for a minute 30 seconds and there's one bubble head in one of the containment chest areas which is a random chance. So as long as you're farming containment, if you at least have that door open, which is one in five chance to open up, um, then you can get that bubble head here. So here just came in, this just finished. And look at that, lucky lucky here, I can show you this, this is the exact bubble head where will spawn over here. As long as you get lucky here, you can get a bubble head if this door is open, but only opens when the tier three is done and it's chosen to be open other ones like i've said you can find it in separate quests um and you can head to the helm here and it'll tell you which ones you've gotten and you have to place them down in the helm to get the triumph progress to get that triumph done so that's pretty much all the triumphs i'm pretty sure i hopefully it's a very long video hopefully i didn't mess up too much hopefully i didn't miss too much but like i've said everything will be timestamped comments will be there um and if i miss anything just comment below uh any mistakes anything i missed i think I think I went through everything. This one's, this one's not that hard. It's just time consuming. But yeah, I do have a lot of time to finish this uh, title and get everything done for this one. Reaper is a nice title name. So, but usually seasonal t seasonal titles are very easy to get. So a lot of people will get it eventually. But uh, hopefully you guys enjoy that. Hopefully nothing too confusing. Uh, try my best to go everything. But I'll link videos for these two here uh, as they're a bit... I can't really show them, but I did explain where they spawn and where they can be uh, for the high targets and the other stuff. But I think a visual representation is better. I just don't have access to those uh, for myself as I didn't stream them to get them. But once you get the bubble heads, just head over here and just interact with all of them. Um, and you should get the triumph done. And it will tell you which one you're missing if you're missing one and you forgot it by accident. It's pretty much just head over here and uh do that all right so hopefully you guys enjoyed that again and uh yeah 40 minutes my, long, my longest guide i think uh, i did some extra stuff it would have been longer if i showed the bubble heads all right so hopefully you guys enjoy that and uh that is it